Shalom and welcome to an episode of Editor's Note. I'm Jonathan Hassan, and with me in the studio is my dear brother in Christ and friend, Yair Pinto. Yair, let's open today's program in prayer and then dive into today's list of topics and updates, of course, uh, with regard to our endeavors. Sure, definitely. And could you back at home please join me in prayer that God will join us here in this program. Our Father in heaven, thank you for the opportunity to be here together to read your word and to discuss the developments that are happening in, uh, in TV7 Israel. We ask you to bless our viewers back at home, touch their hearts, and speak to each and every one of them. Be with us today, bless Jonathan, myself, and the whole production team. B'Shem Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. 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 Let's start with a psalm, mm -hmm. Psalm 117. We'll start in Hebrew and we'll continue immediately to English and then uh, continue into our discussion. Hallelujah, Adonai, Kol Goim, Shabbu, Kol Aumim, Kigavar, Alenu Chazdo, Ve'emet Adonai Le'olam. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, all nations. Laud Him, all peoples. For his loving kindness is great towards us, and the truth of the Lord is everlasting. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, indeed. Uh, Yair. I love this song, Jonathan. I remember as kids, we used to sing it at the congregations here in Jerusalem, and it was really powerful with, you know, stepping with the foot on the, on the floor and clapping the hands. And so, anyway, hallelujah. Good memories, indeed. <laughs> uh, something that maybe you at home don't know, but... Um, similar to many other places uh, around the world, uh, in Israel, many of the songs are based on the Psalms, and some of them are literally just the Psalms themselves. Yeah, David so, was a really good uh, musician. Yes, so, he <laughs> Yes, he was. And he pleased the Lord. Yeah, yeah. It says so repeatedly. Yair, what do we have for today's program? What are we going to discuss? Okay, so we have a few topics. The first thing is like an exciting thing that is happening in Israel and that the gates are open for tourism. Okay, saying that, it sounds amazing. There are a few restrictions that we're going to discuss in this uh, program and see who can come in and how. Okay, because we got uh, a lot of questions from our viewers about how can we visit Israel, we want to see the land. And uh, we are trying to really help you guys back at home, you know, know the technical stuff of that. Uh, another thing is very exciting. We just launched our 10th program, TV7 Powers in Play. Indeed. And, uh, you know, we invite all of you to, join, uh, to watch it. It's an, on our website, on TV7 websites in Finland and in archives of uh, channels that air us. Indeed. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's uh, two things. Um, another important topic that we want to discuss is our financial uh, situation and our development process. Okay, 10 program is a lot, but they also cost uh, money and we are uh, wanting to expand because we believe that that's God's uh, plan for this ministry. And we need the, the viewers' help. We need the... We're expanding in faith. Yeah, yeah. So basically, yeah, now we are doing more productions than what we have uh, finance for, but we have faith and we believe God will uh, fill our coffers with whatever we need. Praise God. Yeah, but we need prayers, we need the partners, we need the <coughs> support. Yeah. And uh, just after this program, we have Europa Stands uh, at 9 p.m., so we'd like to invite all of you back at home to watch the second episode of TV7 Europa Stands that was recorded in Helsinki, Finland. It's going to be very interesting uh, with Jonathan and the rest of the panel. It was a, a great privilege to join again uh, with uh, a group of distinguished mm -hmm. practitioners, uh, leaders, people who have impacted uh, the situation in Europe, but also in the world. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, uh, they are very active and, and have really made uh, uh, impact also for the sake of Jerusalem, for mm -hmm. the sake of the peace of Jerusalem, uh, the sake of <coughs> Israel at large. And, and God is faithful to his word. So when he says that if you work for the peace of Jerusalem, uh, those who do so will prosper, not only for their own sake, but the sake of Achai uh, Vere'ai, it says in Hebrew, my brethren, my mm -hmm. sister, and uh, those who 
are close to my heart. Yeah. So praise the Lord for that, and and may the Lord bless them mightily for also engaging with us in TV7. Mm-hmm. Um, we're truly blessed, Yair, uh, to have such true favor mm-hmm. in the hearts uh, of uh, so many people uh, from the leaders of the world uh, who, even though, you know, TV7 is not yet where it will be, and we know it's heading that way, God is good. God yeah. is good and he's faithful. Uh, the moment he puts you on that path, doesn't matter how narrow that path is, he allows you to persevere. He grants you the tools, the lessons, the experiences necessary to fulfill your responsibilities with excellence. Mm-hmm. And this is so encouraging. And I'd, I'd like to encourage also the people at home, if you're going through something that the Lord has called you to do, First and foremost, and this is something I believe that needs to be done in everything, it cannot contradict the word of the Lord. Mm -hmm. So as long as it is derived from the word of God and he guided you through uh, also signs and wonders at times, which we experienced here in TV7 plenty, uh, allow God to, to help you through it and stay true to him because only through him will whatever you do manifest itself for the kingdom of heaven. So this is something that I think is so encouraging Mm -hmm. Uh, for me personally, of course, for us as TV7 Israel and TV7 as a whole, but I believe also each and every one of our partners, each and every one of the people who join us in prayer on on a regular basis, it's just, you know, we're one family. Mm-hmm. We're one family. We're one unit. Some of us have such roles. Others have other roles. But we're working together to fulfill what God called and the mission of TV7 ultimately mm-hmm. is to to praise God, to yeah. do it by action, of course. And, and uh, it is very humbling to be able to do so. Um, yeah, definitely. And this is also similar to another topic that we wanted to discuss today, which is basically to really test everything that we hear. Okay, so let's say we have uh, heard a message from a preacher, which is a man of God, and that's all good. But the responsibility on confirming and testing the word is on each and every one of us personally. Okay, so God wants a personal relationship. He doesn't need like mediation mediators of course the people are have gifts of teaching and that's amazing but we each and every one of us need to check that that message is uh, accurate and correct according to the word of god amen and according to the holy spirit amen so we have that responsibility to really check and then when we do that god will speak something personal to each and every one of us and that's that's the key here yeah you know Google is no substitute <laughs> to the Word of God. And to spending time in quiet and in peace. Absolutely. That's Absolutely. Good. Spending time is, is vital. Uh, as someone says, And you abided in the Word or the law of the Lord day and yeah. night. But again, the Word of God comes first and foremost. Google is no substitute to the Word of God. You can utilize various online tools in order to establish references, to uh, gain certain directives, to try and research the Word of God. But uh, with all due respect to Google, the Word of God is one. Yeah. And it is complete through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who manifested himself here in this world. So we may continue to the next with our heads held up high. Yeah, so I think now we can, after reading the list and touching base on all the topics, let's maybe go to the first one and then keep it going, or you want to say something else? I I think we asked for prayer Mm -hmm. for our brother here from Jerusalem, John Theodore, and his family. And uh, while his family, his wife and and three kids uh, got better from corona, um, I'm sad to say that John... Um, passed on. Uh, well, it is sad because he leaves a wife, Elina, and, and the three kids uh, here in, in Jerusalem behind. Um, we are comforted 
by the fact, and so is his family, mm -hmm. by the fact that he went to be with the Lord, and, and we know he is now in a better place. Um, John was very special to me. Uh, I, I did go to the funeral in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. um, he was uh, buried in the uh, evangelical slash messianic uh, cemetery mm -hmm. uh, in uh, Emek Refaim, where my father is also buried. Yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, I had a, a short conversation with Elina just to voice my condolences, mm -hmm. as she and John were actually my youth pastors, among others. Um, so he had a special impact on my life. Mm -hmm. And Elina told me when we were there that he was watching every night TV7 Israel News, and he was following everything that we were doing here on the channel. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know that, yeah. you know, but it, it's so encouraging to know that we as brothers and sisters come together. He's originally from Australia, mm -hmm. but he was part of the body here in Israel. Yeah, We're he was old. here for more than 20 years, right? More than 20 years, yeah. yes. Um, but we're one body of Christ, wherever we are, from Africa to Asia to North America, South America, uh, Europe, wherever we come from, mm -hmm. we all proclaim that Jesus is Lord and by the fruits of our spirit, by the, the love that we have for one another, this is how we will be recognized, and I think that is very important. So please, um, if you may, pray for the family of John Theodore. Uh, pray for them fervently, for comfort, for the Lord's comfort, that they may truly um, be encouraged by his love. That, uh, of course, you know, we, we lost a parent, uh, both of us, and it's not easy. Yeah. And how much more is this difficult for little children who are not yet even uh, out of, of school? Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, praise God for his reasons. We yeah. don't understand everything, but he is in control. Yeah, and, you know, we always have the comfort to know that now John is uh, in heaven with, uh, with God and we will all be reunited for eternity. Indeed. Amen. So, Go ahead, Yir. Okay, so talking about tourism, I had a Bible verse prepared to talk about the nations coming to the land, and this is a, a verse also that is very close to our heart here in TV7 and in Truth for the Nations. So it's from uh, Micha 4, 1 to 5. Now it shall come to pass in the latter days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established on the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills, and peoples shall follow it, shall flow to it. Many nations shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways, and we shall walk in his paths. For out of Zion the law shall go forth, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between many peoples and rebuke strong nations afar off. They shall beat their words into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. That's amazing. Amen. Amen. Yeah, and anyway, so in... We, we are waiting for this time that God will you know, reign from Jerusalem and all the nations will come and worship him and there will be no war. But in the meanwhile, we know that uh, coming to Israel and walking the land where Jesus walked and really feeling you know, every location that Jesus preached in is very important for many of our viewers and for us as believers. And for a year and a half since COVID, nobody could come here unless he had special, you know, permits. So starting November 1st, the government finally opened the skies to non-Israelis, to tourists. Who are inoculated, however. Yes, yes, there are restrictions, okay? So the restrictions, as of yesterday, are as follows. You need to be at least uh, vaccinated twice, and the second vaccination must be within the past six months, no longer than six months, okay? If you have three vaccinations, then you're okay, you can come to the land. These are the same uh, regulations that apply to Israelis for receiving a green passport that will allow them to enter 
concerts, uh, museums, uh, restaurants, and all these places. So that, that's the restrictions are the same for Israelis and for tourists. There is a, a clause for groups, and that is, keeps changing. So if a group comes, she needs a bit of a different, uh, different regulations. They might be allowed to come to Israel uh, without being vaccinated twice or three times, but they will need to take a PCR test daily, and this group will be its own like uh, by itself, like isolated mm-hmm. from the rest. So they will be traveling the land, of course, and then going to the hotel. They won't be allowed to um, do stuff independently. Mm-hmm. And every day they will need to test that nobody has COVID. So this is, these are the rules. So as there is an option for non-vaccinated people to enter the land with groups. Yes, but this, the Ministry of Tourism hasn't finalized this, uh, this way yet, this plan, and they keep changing it. So that, what I said now is the latest update that they gave us, mm-hmm. okay? But other than that, the city of Jerusalem and the land of Israel are working hard in developing um, hotels in all levels of uh, prices. So for like five star, four star, three stars, hostels, and more uh, events, the better public transportation. So Israel is preparing for this uh, coming back of tourism. Indeed. And I, yeah. I think it's also uh, good to tell uh, people, just a tip, if you come to Israel, Airbnb is quite rampant here. Yeah. So that you can find Airbnb in reasonable prices. If you come with a group or with uh, groups of people, uh, you should try to find Airbnbs maybe or other options that could provide you with higher standards of accommodations for cheaper prices if you come as a group to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, I'm not tr- a travel <laughs> guide. Um, I, I must say that my brother-in-law, who came to Israel many years ago um, to visit, uh, he and I went on a tour of the entire land of Israel, uh, and we just drove th- surrounding the land. Uh, it took us about a week because we made a lot of mm-hmm. pit stops along the way. Um, but it was very special to go through the Word of God and just based on the Word to choose the specific places where we went to. And then we went to uh, the Emekaela where David and Goliath fought. And then we went through Scripture. We understood the landscape surrounding us. And we started uh, deliberating and discussing the various angles of the circumstances in which David was and uh, King Saul and uh, the whole aspect thereof. And uh, we went to, of course, uh, uh, Emek, uh, uh, where Almageno is uh, anticipated to to be held. Uh, All those different places, just go to those places, build yourself, if you don't go with a group, build yourself a you know, a, yeah, a biblical a, a plan. It really biblical plan. Yeah, indeed. the Bible really comes to life if you walk in these places. Let's say Gethsemane, where Jesus asked for the disciples to stay awake and pray with him because the hour is nearing, mm. and then he was, you know, taken for the last time. It's just literally twenty minutes by train from here. You know, by indeed. the light rail, and then yeah. walking a little bit. So everything is very close by. And Jerusalem and Israel is a small country, so renting a car. And you can travel the whole land and really cover the Bible. Absolutely. But saying that, we understand that uh, people don't have the money, the time to come in for two weeks to Israel, even if they uh, are able with all these uh, regulations. Mm. So here in TV7, with the help, of course, of uh, TFTN, we are working on a program also that will um, go on the footsteps of Jesus a and, production, yeah. not, a, not a tour program. We're not a tour company. No, no, a, a production, a, yeah, teachings of the Bible. But we understand that we are here. We are in Israel. <clears throat> this is something we can bless our viewers with Indeed. by going to the places, showing the scenery, and then mm-hmm. reading the Word of God. I, I think it's so mighty uh, of an experience. For instance, you mentioned the Garden of Gethsemane. Mm-hmm. To go there, to have quiet time, to pray there. And to do so literally in the place where Jesus did it. And it it provides a unique 
aspect. Of course, wherever you are, go into your room or uh, and and communicate with the Lord. And it, it will provide you a lot of solace. It mm-hmm. will provide you the relationship that the Word of God speaks about. But having uh, the the opportunity to once in a lifetime opportunity for many, yeah, um, to go and and experience this quiet time in prayer with the Lord in places where Jesus did so. Um, for me personally, it was very. Um, fulfilling uh, Mm -hmm. to really encourage me and build me up on a spiritual level and uh, I know that it's not possible for everyone and that's where it derived from this new program uh, to allow you at home to experience that to go through the places and therefore we're working already it's it's not we want to we're working already on uh, formatting the program formatting the episodes Yair will host this together with Amir Tzalfati, uh, who will go together and, and um, based on, on the timeline of the Bible, yes. head to the different places, explain what happened there, mm-hmm. uh, and read together, yeah. and pray together, and see the sites, and understand the sites, and not the touristical ones, necessarily. Okay, I'm not talking about tourism. I'm talking about the relationship between man and God, I'm talking the, or woman and God, you know, we, we wow. want that personal relationship to manifest. And by doing so, we reflect what God does through us to our surroundings, to our families, to our friends, and we can impact the nations for the sake of, of our Heavenly Father. This is super exciting saying that. You know, I can't wait to start the filming on the mountain of Beatitudes, on the Sea of Galilee, and reading the Bible verses and sharing this information with, with all of our viewers back at home. Absolutely. But I think uh, we need to move on our list if we Go want ahead. to conclude it. Indeed. So we launched uh, our 10th program, TV7 Powers in Play. Okay, so maybe a few words about this new and interesting program. Well, I think it's it's safe to say that most of our viewers are familiar with the fact that we want to give you at home the opportunity to understand what is happening in today's juncture in time. Mm-hmm. This moment is of critical importance. We live in the latter days. Mm-hmm. I, I strongly believe so. Um, I mean, just looking around us, From the micro to the macro, we can truly understand the significance of the events that are currently at play. And at the moment, uh, it was the moment in Alaska where the Chinese uh, minister or uh, minister, foreign minister or Mm -hmm. minister of uh, state for foreign uh, affairs of the, the CCP, they came up to the incumbent Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, and uh, White House National Security Advisor, Jake Sullivan, and they told them, point blank, we are pure nations, we now see eye to eye. The moment that happened, the age of strategic competition started. Mm -hmm. Strategic competition means that the global powers are now playing for for power in the world, not only power on the physical realm, but also on the theological realm, on the ideological realm, uh, between totalitarian regimes and uh, democracies, yeah. but also between Christianity and uh, Islam and, and other religions that are going to be impacted by this strategic... It's always a spiritual war Absolutely. As well. So as we do in TV7 Israel News and Jerusalem Studio and uh, Watchmen Talk and, and all the other programs that we produce here, our goal is to grant you the tools at home so you'll be able to, first of all, understand where we're at, mm-hmm. what is happening, what impacts also, among others, the peace of Israel the, the peace of Jerusalem, and pray for it. Pray for it. Join together. Call a friend. 
pray for those things, whether it is in your churches, in your small groups, we need to stand up for the situation that God's will be done mm-hmm. on earth as it is in heaven. It is part of the Lord's Prayer. Mm-hmm. It is a significant part of the Lord's Prayer. And again, also speaking about this, I would like to urge you at home, pray for your leaders, even if you don't mm-hmm. uh, agree with them, even if they're going against the Word of God. Remember, when the person who killed King Saul came and boasted about it to David, the anointed one of the Lord, what did David do? He rebuked him to death. He condemned him to death because that same person took away someone who was installed there by God even though he wasn't doing God's uh, will at that moment, we yeah. still need to pray for them, for their salvation, and for who uh, God wants them to be and in what footsteps to go, because this is as much a spiritual warfare as it is a physical one. Definitely, Here. definitely. So yeah, so this program is uh, combined by all the top experts, and we like to invite you to join it. Mm-hmm. I think another important thing, because we are running late, is that uh, at 9 p.m., we have the second episode of Europa Stands. Indeed. So we'd like to invite you back at home to join this program. And uh, I think uh, we have maybe 30 seconds, Jonathan. Indeed. Uh, again, pray for the situation in Europe. Mm-hmm. It also impacts what's happening here, but it will grant you a new perspective to the situation. Uh, I'm looking forward to having you join me and, and the panelists from Helsinki. Um, which I, I believe is very important uh, in today's day and age. But with that, we have run out of time. So, Yair, thank you for granting us so much important information. And I'd like to thank our viewers as well. And we're looking forward to seeing you again very soon. God bless and shalom. TV7's productions and editorials, we invite you to visit our website at www.tv7israelnews.com.